Here is a stamp from the autonomous region of Orland, a place that shows up in my stamp albums and I really know nothing about. It features a purple flower with its Swedish name and then its scientific name in the bottom right. Campanula trichelium, I think, and it's below the word CPAC. Also at the bottom is the artist or photographer's name and the year that the stamp was issued, 2014. The stamp has been cancelled with what looks to be a first day of issue postmark. It's a pictorial cancel with the image of the flower and was cancelled in Mariaham, the capital of the Orland Islands on the 8th of May in 2014. This is a non-denominated postage stamp, meaning that there's no face value. Instead, the word Europa indicates that this stamp is used for priority mail to the Nordic countries in Europe, with a maximum weight of 20 grams. This is a fairly large stamp, measuring 36.5 by 32 millimeters, and I think there is going to be a lot to learn from it. At first glance, I thought the stamp may have been soaked off a first aid cover, uh, such as this one, which would have explained how it got its first day of issue postmark on it. But when I look at the back of the stamp, I still see gum that has been untouched, and this feels far too good to have been used. So I believe this is a CTO or cancelled to order stamp in which the post office cancelled a number of these stamps either on the date of or more likely before or after uh, the particular date to sell to stamp collectors as a used stamp. Anyway, there are a lot of questions that we can pull from the stamp to learn about without having to explore too far. And I have a few other stamps from Orland, which are pretty cool. But as I've already said, I don't know anything about the Orland Islands other than the fact that they issue stamps. I don't know why they issue stamps. And I don't even know where they are located geographically, which is probably where we should start with a map. The Orland Islands are right here, right in between Sweden and Finland. And it's not a country, but rather an archipelago of about 300 habitable islands that are an autonomous region of Finland. And so they are Finnish islands that have a level of independence or autonomy to self-govern. They have their own flag, their official language is Swedish, not Finnish. It had its own vote to join the European Union along with Finland. And the most important sign of autonomy, don't argue with me here, the most important sign of autonomy is that Orland issues its own postage stamps. It's an interesting administrative situation and the history of the Orland Islands includes being a part of Sweden, then Russia, then Finland, and its current situation, being an autonomous region of Finland, seems to satisfy everyone, including the Finns, the Swedes, and the people of the Orland Islands. So now that we've learnt about where Orland is, let's talk about its stamps. Although the Orland Islands self-government from Finland was established in 1921 by the League of Nations, the first stamps that were actually issued for Orland were in 1984. It was this first set of sailboat definitives, a simple clean design for six definitives varying in color. But these first stamps were actually issued by the Finnish Postal Administration in cooperation with the Orland government. They didn't have full autonomy over their postal services yet. And so this arrangement of Finland producing Orland stamps continued for nine years until 1993, when the Orland Autonomy Act was revised. And this allowed the islands to take over all of the postal responsibilities. The style in Orland's postal stamps doesn't have a drastic change after its postal administration becomes more independent in 93, but a few stamps were issued that year to celebrate the postal independence. Regardless of this revised autonomy act in 1993, the first year Orland issued stamps is considered to be 1984. And this still makes Orland a completely achievable task to collect all stamps that have ever been issued from Orland. The islands have issued up to 23 stamps per recent years, a lot of which depict the island's connection to the ocean, ships, trade, 
and source of food, but also sporting heroes and other cultural topics. The Orland Islands also seem to enjoy issuing stamps depicting buildings, especially bridges and churches. On the other side, while Orland is really achievable to collect, it doesn't necessarily mean everyone watching has a stamp from Orland in their collection. Since the islands have been issuing stamps for a relatively short period of time in comparison to other issuing entities, there simply aren't enough years worth of stamps out there to have made their way into everyone's collections. But Orland is an active issuer of stamps today, so you'll find it in Kilauea and other international packs for collectors to enjoy. Before 1984, and of course after they became a region of Finland, they used Finnish stamps. Here is a postcard that was sent from Hammerland, a municipality of Orland, and it was sent on the 20th of August 1929 using an orange 1927 one Finnish marker stamp. So collectors of the area of Orland would be interested in postmarks such as this, capturing the postal history prior to the first issuing of Orland stamps. So let's talk about a word that shows up on the stamp, CPAC. You may be familiar with the word already on other stamps within your collection. It's an acronym that stands for Small European Postal Administration Cooperations, and that is exactly what it is. Several small European postal administrations that have gotten together for an annual conference to discuss philatelic matters related to these small postal administrations. To be part of CPAC, you have to be a small postal administration, so small that more than 50% of your philatelic sales need to take place externally, outside of your country. And that would be a very different situation to countries such as France, Germany or Spain, for example. Currently, there are 13 stamp issuing entities that are part of CPAC, and as you already know, one of them is the Orland Islands. Now, other than them getting together and chatting about important philatelic matters, they also agree on a theme each year and have their postal services issue a stamp for that theme with the CPAC logo. And so you'll find stamps bearing the logo from those CPAC countries. They can, of course, issue more than one stamp for that theme, uh, like a set of four, for instance, but only one of the stamps can be designated as the CPAC stamp and get the CPAC logo. Then, all those stamps are taken to a vote in which the most beautiful stamp is awarded to the issuing entity. The one we pulled from the box was the winner of that year, 2014. Orland won the most beautiful stamp vote. Of course, the theme that year was floral. It sounds very similar to Europa stamps, and it is very similar to Europa stamps. It's just not part of Post Europa. It's specific to CPAC, those small postal administrations. I briefly discussed Europa stamps in a season three episode, and I'll place that link in the video description. The participants of CPAC can still take part in Europa. They can take part in both the Europa theme and the CPAC theme in a given year. And so you'll find stamps from Orland that have the Europa logo and some stamps with the CPAC logo. Just a quick note from an earlier observation. You'll find a lot of Orland stamps with the word Europa on it. But they are not Europa stamps in the sense they're not taking part in the shared Europa theme of that year. And this could be a little bit confusing. By 2008, Orland was issuing non-denomination stamps, stamps that have no face value printed on it, but represented areas that they were valid for sending post to. So you'll see stamps from Orland without a denomination, but with the words local post, priority mail within Orland, inreichs, domestic mail to Finland, Europa, which is the priority mail to the Nordic countries and Europe, Valden, priority mail to international destinations, and Yule Post, Christmas greetings to destinations in Orland, Finland, and Sweden at a reduced rate during a limited period of time in November and December. So in regards to the Europa theme stamps, just take note of the font or typeface. The Europa theme has a specific block print font. And yes, there are Europa Europa stamps. Stamps that are designated postage for within Europe and are part of the Europa theme, like this one. Just going back to CPAC stamps briefly, one of the cool things that I found while looking into them are these folders that are really neat to look at. As part of the issuing of stamps for the CPAC theme, a collaborative presentation folder is made available for purchase with some of the CPAC stamps that year. The folder also includes additional details about the subject as it relates to the issuing entity. This one is Beautiful Corners of Europe from 2011, 
and you can see that it is an opportunity to really appreciate and enjoy the beautiful designs and diverse characteristics of these smaller stamp issuing entities. I also have the 2017 theme folder, Local Handcrafts of Europe. This one brings out some of the unique cultural identities of each of the participants, including a favorite of mine, the Icelandic sweater stamp that is actually made from wool. And finally, going back to this stamp that we pulled from the box. Let's talk about the subject on it, the flower. Flowers are perhaps one of the most common themes on stamps out there. Over 20,000 stamps have been issued worldwide with some sort of flower present. And why not? They're colorful, attractive subjects that are indigenous to countries and can be a part of a country's identity. And different species can easily be grouped together to form a set of stamps issued at one time. So if you're thinking about becoming a floral philatelist, just be mindful that you're probably not going to be able to collect all flowers on stamps that have ever been issued. Maybe narrow your focus to specific species if you're looking to achieve a full collection. In this case, we're looking at a Campanula trachelium. Campanulas are bell flowers. Campanula is actually Latin for little bell, as the flower totally resembles a little bell. And there are over 500 different species of bell flowers out there. According to the American Topical Association, at this time there are only 150 or so stamps that feature a bell flower. This one that is featured on the stamp is commonly known as a nettled leaf bell flower and is native to areas of Denmark and England but it can also be found in Ireland and much of Europe into North Africa. It's not that common in Orland, believe it or not, although Orland has several species of bellflower. And yes, I looked to see if I could purchase a specific species online so I can show it to you here, but uh, no luck. I don't know much about flowers. Maybe it's off season or maybe it would be an invasive species to New Jersey, but I got you six seconds of stock footage to enjoy instead. While Orland is not a nation, it has national or I guess official symbols such as its official colors, it has an official animal, an official dish, an official bird, and it has an official flower which is not the bell flower from the stamp, but actually something known as a cow's lip. While I'm looking through these stamps from Orland, I'm really appreciating the fact that it's a small postal entity, but has captured so much imagery from the Orland Islands, whether it's geographical or fauna and flora or structural, even cultural. The imagery and the topics are true to the island's identity. Orland does not seem to be issuing stamps with non-relatable themes to try grab a slice of the philatelic market, be it something popular or themes that everyone collects. A collector of Orland will really be able to learn about the islands. And just by looking through some of these stamps, you can really start to visualize life on the Orland Islands. Anyway, before pulling this stamp, I didn't know anything about Orland. Now I want to visit these semi-autonomous Swedish-speaking Finnish islands that issue stamps. I will leave a number of links to videos and other materials where you can learn more about Orland and its stamps as well as CPAC stamps. Let me know in the comments if you collect CPAC stamps or stamps from Orland. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and make sure that you have subscribed. As always, thank you for watching and happy exploring.